Right, hi there. Um, so uh, this is just a very quick video uh, to kind of show off uh, and explain some of the capabilities that the uh, Allen & Heath uh, X1 DB4 is, uh, you know, what it's capable of. Um, this is for guys that are interested in uh, using a Mix Architects TSI file, uh, who also happens to uh, uh, represent Alan and Heath out in Asia. He was extremely helpful in actually helping me uh, set this thing up. It's actually very, very simple to do, and I just wanted to kind of show you guys because there isn't anything on uh, on YouTube thus far that actually explains how the the uh, the actual mixer works in, uh, in MIDI shift mode. So, as you can see at the moment, this is the MIDI shift button over here. I apologize for the flash. Um, basically, you've got the four channels, and right now it's an actual mixer mode, right? So, what this means is that uh, you know you use it as you would a regular uh, a regular mixer. Uh, now, if I click on this button, of, oh, by the way, I've got the uh, Tractor Scratch Pro running uh, in in the background to set it up, and I've actually um, hooked up also uh, my X1. Uh, and you'll see that the two USB ports that I'm actually utilizing on the computer, uh, one uh, goes to the uh, X1, and the other one is used uh, as the um, sound card output, uh, uh, you know, for the uh, for each uh, of the four channels. So all you have to do is, uh, you know, go into the the tractor preferences and select uh, the uh, after you've installed the drivers, the X1 DB4 as your uh, channel output, and use it in mixer external mode. Uh, because you're obviously going to be using this mixer uh, and not the internal one. So uh, with that aside, um, now if I hit on the uh, MIDI shift button, basically what that allows you to do is it changes the mixer or part of like the controls for the mixer uh, into, uh, you know, to, to send uh, MIDI control notes uh, for each of the four channels. Now what this does uh, at the moment, um, there are two, two faces, if you will. So I've got an extra button here. Um, which takes me, you know, one further page, so I can actually have shift functions for all of these buttons. Primarily, the ones that you're going to be using are the the effects buttons, I believe. Um, are, they're the ones that send uh, send actual MIDI. Um, so, um, without further ado, I'm just going to show you. So, on the first page, so if I want to, let's say, load a track, um, uh, I'll click over here uh, on the f bottom rotary encoder. And what that does is when I click on it, boom, it brings up the, uh, the actual browser. So let's say that, you know, you know turning the knob uh, up and down allows me to search for a track. So let's say that I want to put on Apocalypse. Uh, then I go back down to my mixer and I can choose which, you know, which channel I want to put it in. So let's say that I want to put it in channel A. So remember that the setup here is much like the uh, 4D if you, uh, or the 3D, uh, if you guys ever use that. So it goes... Uh, uh, a, uh, sorry, uh, C, A, B, and D uh, as the four tracks. So you need to remember this kind of layout. So now that I've selected the track and I've actually hit the uh, FX select button to put it in channel A, I need to uh, basically come over. Oh, sorry, come over here and uh, exit browser mode, which takes me out of browser mode. And then uh, I'm back on the uh, page one, uh, if you will. So what this works is a cue point. So this is like sort of like on a CDJ where you press and hold Q and the track will play. This is play, and this is to shift through uh, all of your um, uh, cue points. Now, you know, remember that at the moment there isn't a TSI file available that allows you to beat juggle. So, for example, you can't assign these to. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you can. I just don't know how to do it. I've, I'm just taking the TSI file from uh, Mix Architect, but. Uh, you can't beat juggle, so this allows you to go forward. This takes you back a cue point. So, at the moment, I don't have any, but like I have, uh, you know, cue point one because I've just loaded this from my hard drive. Uh, and then basically, if I click on the next cue point, uh, you'll see that the cursor is going to jump. I don't know if you can actually see this very well. To uh, to cue point one. Now coming back here, I hit play. And uh, if I raise the volume a little bit, I can do that. Now, uh, it's pretty cool, it's very, very simple to use, very, very easy. Uh, this button here on, uh, on the first uh, sort of uh, MIDI page, let me just turn the volume down, um, allows you to uh, set a loop. So by clicking on it, uh, if I turn it around, you can see that at the bottom uh, of the track, uh, I can set it to one bar, two bars, four bars, exactly as you would either on S4 or whatever other MIDI controller you're using. So if I click the encoder down, it automatically assigns uh, it to, the, to the, the length of the loop that I wanted. And by turning it, I can do whatever I want. Um, what else? 
uh, again, this is the, uh, the play button, so I've paused it now at the moment. Let's say I want to go and load up another track. Uh, I go over here, I click on the encoder again. Uh, this brings up the, uh, the browser window. Uh, let's say I go down to, uh, oh, I don't know, uh, Community Funk. Uh, Dead Mouse Remix. Uh, I go back down here and let's say that I want to load it into channel B. Uh, so I, I press the uh, FX Select button. Again, I exit uh, browser mode and boom, it's right there. Now, if you'll notice again, um, you know, I need to go to Q.1. So I come down here uh, and I go to this is move forward, this is move backward on the Q point. Let's say I want to go here. Boom, I got it, uh, and I'm on there. Now let's say that you want to sync a track. How do you sync? Basically, you utilize the, the second uh, MIDI shift button. So let's say you know, uh, it takes you to the second page of the MIDI uh, template. Uh, don't worry about this. This just brings up a menu. Uh, and then what this allows you to do is you press the, what would usually, sorry, I'm on channel three. What would usually be the looper function now becomes the sync function. So if I click on that and I press it down, it's synced and it goes synced to my first track, whatever that is, but now, so I've got uh, no tracks playing, so this is just syncing to whatever it was, uh, whatever it was last. Now, um, away from that, what else can I do? Uh, I've got these two buttons here on the second page allow me to uh, phase shift, so like just you would as you would with your MIDI controller or with a CDJ, where you push the record forward or backwards because sometimes you start a track and it's out of beat. Uh, what this allows you to do is kind of like, uh, you know, push it forward or backwards. So uh, I'll show you an example of kind of how that works. Now if I were just remove this uh, sync button over here and I just hit play, again I need to get out of like the second page to be back in the first page and I hit play on my, uh, um, on my mixer, uh, I bring it up a little bit. Now if I go back and I hit that MIDI shift button that I was telling you to take me to the second page, now if I press forward, you'll see that it's speeding up and again slowing down. So these actually work. So it's a very, very easy to you know mixer to use. Now let's say that you wanted to use an effect on top of that, right? You can still you still have access to all of your effects. The way you do that is you just exit. Uh, out of uh, media shift mode and now you're back into your mixer setting so let's say that uh, uh, what you want to do is to you know change the effect so you've got the delay right you've got verb um, resonance modulation and uh, and damage which is sort of like an overdrive feature so let's say I've, I've got delay on at the moment uh, when you press it it automatically selects the channel upon which uh, it is and I've got something called a fat EQ here which sounds pretty cool as a delay um, and by turning this knob, you can actually see it. Let me just turn it up a little bit, uh, and you'll see what I'm talking about. So you, you get the you get the point. Now the uh, features on this mixer are endless. Maybe I'll do a video uh, a little later on to kind of explain. Uh, uh, you know some of the uh, uh, cool neat tricks that you know you can actually do uh, on this thing but uh, you know for anyone that's you know thinking about uh, maybe switching from a 4D I used to have a 3D so I've never owned a 4D but um, you know I think that uh, particularly if you're using something like uh, you know the X1 or um, you know some other MIDI controller and you want to have sort of more hands-on remember this is a fully digital mixer right so it's not designed to be a MIDI controller it's very very easy to use as a MIDI controller uh, you can MIDI map it uh, although I'm not a MIDI mapping expert uh, if you want the TSI file you can find you can find it on the uh, Native Instruments uh, website uh, and uh, you know just search on the forum and you'll find it from uh, Mix Ar Architect again uh, I owe a lot to this guy. He's actually helped me out massively, uh, despite the fact that I'm based in London. You know, he was very, very quick to respond. He represents Alan and Heath uh, out in Asia. So anything, uh, any questions you have directed to him, uh, I'm happy to help from my experience so far. Um, it is a beast. I love this mixer and the sound quality from all the effects uh, units are just uh, second to none. So, uh, you know, if you guys are, you know, lucky enough to kind of uh, be able to find one at the moment, uh, you know, or have the dough to shell it out, I, I highly recommend this mixer. It is phenomenal. Uh, okay. Uh, thanks for watching.